you're the pastor of this house. God bless you. message for today. That's for another day. Glory be your name. First and foremost, God bless all of you here with us. And God bless all of you watching today. I know God has a word for us all because he's already spoken to me. But I want to share a couple of things with you before we get into the word. And what I do want to share is that God is good. And he loves us unconditionally. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to go straight into the word of God. Let us go to the gospel of Luke chapter 15. God's just been speaking, speaking, speaking. And for those who have ears, listen to what he is saying to you. Don't worry about what he is saying for someone else. But when you learn to accept what he is saying for you, life becomes better. Trust me, it surely does. Because and then you stop focusing on what you're surrounded by. Mm -hmm. See, because there's a difference. A lot of times we want to surround ourselves with the people we shouldn't and we leave everybody else to the side. But when you surround yourself with the people that you need to be around, Amen. life becomes better. Amen. Trust me, I know. Son? I know. Hallelujah. But let us get to the gospel of Luke chapter 15. I'm going to read from verses 11 to 20. But I want you to keep your Bible close by. Because we're going to hit a couple of the other verses. But I want to focus on verses 11 to 20. Amen? amen. When you have it, just give me an amen. amen. Hallelujah. The word is read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything there, was a famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And, why, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your highest servants. So he said, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Father God, I come before thy presence, giving you glory and honor. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for this moment and opportunity that you've given us to be here today. I ask you that on this day, Heavenly Father, yes. that you remove me and you place yourself. That the words that come out of this mouth be your words and not mine. That everyone listening on this day, whether in person or on Facebook Live, whether today or later, Heavenly Father, that you fill their hearts with your glory, with your presence, and that they know without a doubt, Heavenly Father, that you have spoken to them. I ask you this in the precious name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Those that are here may have a seat, but do not depart from the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Santo. Our title for today, it's time to return. 
I don't know where you've been or where you find yourself right now, but today I tell you, it is time to return. You don't have to worry about how the Father is going to receive you because I can guarantee you that he is going to receive you with open arms when you return. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. As I said, keep your Bibles close by because we will touch on some of the other verses. Today, the key focus is on these verses that I ran, that it is time to return. We all fall short of his glory, but in today's society, this is how many believers are moving. They are seeking their inheritance. They are seeking their blessings. But once they receive their blessing, they begin to depart from the presence of the Lord. They think they know better than God knows. See, so when God gives them a blessing, they move away from God as opposed to moving closer to God. Amen. So don't be fooled by a little piece of an inheritance yes. that you receive from God because he has something greater for you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. For the last few weeks, we've been speaking of the way back. Not your way back, but how to bring God back into your life. See, we, we, we have to understand and try to focus on what is it that we have to do. What is it that God is calling us to do as believers, not only to bring him back into our lives, but bring him back into our homes, to bring him back into our communities, to bring them back into the schools, to bring them back into our job place, to bring them back into our hearts. Because many of us have taken God out of our heart. We've placed them somewhere. See, I hate to be the bearer of bad news today, but I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I have to be the bearer of bad news. Because if I don't do it, Who's good? Knowing that he doesn't belong there, but yet, because he looks good there, you place him there. When things begin to go wrong, then you begin to wonder what happened. Why is this going wrong? See, I'm going to share a couple of things with you. Because, see, many have placed God on a shelf. What do you mean, Pastor? See, many of us go out and we buy a statue of Christ. We buy a statue of Jesus. And we place it on a shelf. And we look at that statue, see? And we begin to worship the statue and not God. We use the statue as an idol for us. That's not serving God. You don't need a statue of Christ to serve him. See, many of us are, are holding on to, to God on a cross. We get a cross with Jesus Christ on it, and we keep him close by. When we run into a problem, we grab it. And then we think that we're worshiping God. But you're not worshiping God. Hallelujah. You're worshiping the cross that you're holding on to. Wow. Wow. Trust me. I'm not saying that owning a statue is bad. I'm not saying that having a cross with Christ on it is bad. What I'm saying is that when you treat Jesus Christ as though he is still on the cross, you are wrong. Because he is no longer on the cross. I'm not saying that owning a statue is wrong. You can have a statue and place it on the shelf, but don't run to the statue when you're in trouble or you're in need thinking that the statue is going to answer your prayers. A statue is not going to answer your prayers. Because if that statue falls to the floor, I guarantee you the head and the arms will fall the way the Philistines guys head and hands broke off when he was in the presence of God. See, we are to keep God in our hearts, close inside of us, that when you are in need, you don't go to a cross where he's hanging on, or you don't go to a statue that you place on a shelf, but you drop on your knees and you go before the presence of God. If you can take a hold of yourself, yes, God. you're a whole lot better. Yes, God. You're a whole lot better. Yes, God. I'm not here to offend nobody today. I'm just here to give you a little insight. Amen? Trust me. But also last week, we received a powerful message. 
Minister Jacob Quinones came and brought us a powerful message. And although we had some technical difficulties, the word was still delivered. Amen. It was delivered. The fireworks were still exploding. See, you can't stop God when he's on the move. No one can detain him. See, Satan will always try and stop the truth from being told in whatever means he can. But when the truth is in you, it has to be spoken. You can't worry about how other people are going to feel. It just has to be brought forth. Amen? Amen. I just love the way God puts things together. Amen. But I, I, I want to read. I'm going to go into these scriptures here. And I'm going to go in a little movement. And I need you just to move along with me. You see? Because. Glory be to God. Santo. It's who you surround yourself with. Amen. I don't care what you have. Because there are people that will be with you as long as you have. Yeah, that's right. The minute you don't have, the people are gone. See, but when you surround yourself with Christ, when you surround yourself with the love of Christ, he will always be there for you. He doesn't leave you. We leave him. In the scriptures that I read, it speaks of the, the prodigal son. It's the lost son. And it starts off that there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of this estate. So the father divided his property between them. Father didn't have to. Because normally you get your inheritance when your parents are gone. Not while they're alive. See, but the father, because of the love that he had for his son, said, you know what? Here you go. And he split it. He divided it into both of them. Gave them their share. Then the, then the Bible says, not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. See, a lot of times, many of us, as you, and I'm going to say as youth, and, and, and even adults do it nowadays, so, so we, we're going to just speak in general. But there are too many believers, like I said earlier, that they go before the presence of God. They say, God, I just want my blessing, right? You receive your blessing. Then you, sometime later, just like this young man did, you pack your things up and you start to move away from God thinking that you have everything in control, thinking that you could go and squander out and, and, and just, you know, be a big baller, a big spender, and you're hanging around all these people that are so-called friends, and then all of a sudden, you know, when, when you have nothing else left, and I got it right, see, when you have nothing else left, because even his friends left him. Uh -huh. They left him as fast as the money left him. He used everything he had to please everybody else around him, you know. And, and, and I know how it goes because when you're in the world, you'll, you'll jump and, and, and you like to go party and you go in the bar and, 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 and you, hey, the tab's on me, folks, come on, you know. And then you go broke, right, and, and you don't see none of them at no time going into their wallet to say, hey, you know what, I got you covered. You know, they'll go out with you, they'll hang with you, they'll drink with you, they'll party with you. You go out to, to eat after all of that. I remember those days. I remember them, clearly. But I know they weren't healthy. See, when I came to the feet of Christ, I began to analyze all the things I'd done. And I began to realize how much of an idiot I was. Oh, wow. Ain't no shame in my game. See, because I can speak the truth. See, can't nobody come to me to tell me how much of an idiot I was because I already know. But come to me now, and I can tell you how much of an idiot you are. There's a difference. Because when you know who you are in Christ, 
You don't worry about what other people think about you. Amen. See, I was I, I went into places and I've done things and three, four o'clock in the morning, five, you know, five, six o'clock in the morning, we'll go and go into a diner to sit down and have breakfast and then go home to get some rest. To get up the next day to go party again. See, when you do these things, you begin to think that you cool. But you ain't cool. You ain't cool at all. See, you have to analyze who you are in Christ. And when you begin to see who you are in Christ, you begin to see that the things that you've done and the people that you surrounded yourself with were never really your friends. And even family will move you to the side. There's no difference in all of this. See, but today I tell you, it doesn't matter what error you made. What matters is that it is time to return. Amen. You have to find your way back. Because when you find your way back, God greets you with open arms. Yes, God. He, open, he opens his arms. He hugs you. He gives you the love that was required. Yes. See, this son, he went out and he did all of this and he partied. And all of a sudden, he just became broke. Broke. Everything he ever owned was gone. Gone. You want to know why? Why? Because he prematurely took his blessing. He prematurely took what was coming to him. Because he had an idea, but the wrong strategy. We spoke about that before. You see? He had a great idea. But a very bad strategy. Because his strategy caused them to go broke. To end up with nothing. It says, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole that whole country, and he began to be in need. Hallelujah. See, many Christians, many Christians. See, because the unbelievers, they don't know better. But when you're a believer, or when you claim to be a believer, you're supposed to know better. You're supposed to be able to separate the two. You're supposed to be able to, under, to, to identify what's right and what's wrong. What's good and what's bad. Who you should be around and who you shouldn't be around. Who you should receive counsel from. And who you should give counsel to. Amen. He began to be in need. But when he was in need, he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country. So he sent, who was sent, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. A lot of us, a lot of true believers, prefer to be in the pig's pen than in the kingdom pen. See, because the world is nothing but a pig's pen. Wow. The world is dirty. Amen. The world don't play fair. Amen. There is nothing in that world that is clean. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. If you can show me one thing in that world that is clean, I'll move with you. Because I know there's nothing in that world that's clean. Amen. I've been all through there. Wow. And there is nothing out there that is clean. Amen. See, that's the pig's pen. And you go out there. And you spend everything that you got. Why? Because you want to look good. You want to you wanna be good. See? But the minute you do that, and the people realize you have nothing, you stay just like that with nothing. Because they don't even want to be around you. They, they, they act like they don't even know you. They'll walk down the street and they see you and they'll cross the street wow. to the other side just so you won't ask them right. for a cup of coffee. That's right. Same just so thing. you won't ask them for a, a, a little meal. No eye contact. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not at all. Then you begin to feel unworthy. You begin to ask what happened. Very simple. If you take a moment and you start to analyze what happened. Man, I was in my father's house. I had it so good. I, I decided to take my share and just get up and leave. Wow. What happened to everything that I had? Wow. What happened? Because when you start to put it together, you'll realize what happened. Wow. When you can acknowledge that you did wrong, 
it makes it easier for you to begin to move forward and not backward. You have to understand what part you played in your own life that has caused you to go sour. Come on. Hallelujah. When you can do that, life becomes better. So this man, he went and he longed to just have something to eat. He didn't care if it was the pods that he was feeding the pigs. He just wanted something. But even at that, nobody gave him nothing. Nothing. He just got lost. He lost himself. But what you have to understand is that, see, it didn't stay there. Because verse 17 says, when he came to his senses. See, God gives you that opportunity to come to your senses. You don't have to drag yourself through the mud. You don't have to stay down on the ground. See, when you begin to realize what you have done, when you begin to come back to your senses, you begin to realize, man, why am I dealing with this? Why do I have to go with this? See, so now he came up with an idea. He came up with an idea. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death? You don't have to starve to death. When you find yourself down and out, go before the presence of the Hallelujah. Father. You don't need to bow down to someone to give you a meal. You don't need to sell yourself. You don't need to go do something ridiculous just to get a meal. You go before the presence of the Father, and he will provide your every need. He will provide your every need. When you know that you have a need, the only person that can provide that need is God the Father. Thank you, Papa. Hallelujah. See, a lot of us, and I said us, see, because as believers, we are one. But there are too many believers that are having a problem, especially during this season. During the, during the summer season. You know why they have a problem? I'm going to tell you why they have a problem. A lot of believers have a problem because they don't know who to choose. They don't know if to choose the son of God or the son of the world. See, the son of God is Jesus Christ. The son of the world is the sunshine. See, people at this time, when it starts to get hot outside, they start to justify why they can't come to church. Why they don't have time for God? Because there's too many things that have to get done. There's too many things to do. And if they come to church, they're not going to get the things done. That is a lie from Satan. He has manipulated you to stay away from the church, to stop fellowshipping, because the son that you should be is the one that gave his life for you and me. When you choose the son of God, Jesus Christ, your life will be good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're going to go through trials and tribulations. Don't misunderstand me. But you're never going to be in need of something because he will always provide your need. Yes. But when you choose the sunshine, you will just get red. You'll turn red. Because you're standing there thinking that just taking in the sun is better than having the sun in you. Amen. I'll choose the sun in me anytime over the sun that wants to sit above me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This boy, this young man came to his senses. He realized that everything he had planned, all the plans he had did was very foolish. All it did was cause him to go bankrupt. He had nothing. He had no place to stay. He had nothing to eat. Lord knows if he still has sandals. Because at desperate moments, you do desperate things. But it came a time and moment where he realized it's time to return. The servants in my own father's house have more than I have. They have 
of food in abundance that they have leftovers. Me, I have nothing. I have to dig around and scrap for some things. That's why there are so many young people that get lost out there in the world. Because they think they know better. They want to run and go grab on to a fast life. And that is no life. No life. Hallelujah. He came up with a plan. In his worst moments, mm -hmm. he was able to come to his senses. Amen. What I'm trying to tell you, that in your worst Hallelujah. moments, Hallelujah. don't give up. Amen. Come to your senses and return to your father. Amen. Return to your father. Hallelujah. See, this young man said, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. He came to his senses. He realized he didn't only sin against his father, but to the heavens. Amen. To the heavens. He said, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father's house. See, he planned it. He strategized it. But this time, his idea and his strategy went hand in hand. See, he rehearsed what he was going to tell his father. He rehearsed what he had to do. He didn't just get up and go back to bed. He said, I will go back to my father's house. I will let him know that I have sinned. Because a lot of people want to return to the father's house, but they don't want to admit that they sin. They don't want to admit that they sin. They say, well, God knows it all. Of course he knows it all. But he likes to hear it all, too. Amen. He likes to hear it come out of you. Because there are times we just think we can present ourselves before God the Father and say, well, you know all things, so here I am. You know, wow. Just bless me today, Father. Bless me. I know I was wrong. Bless me. No, you got to know how to go before the presence of the Lord. And you have to learn how to say, Father, I know I sinned against you. Forgive me. I know I was wrong. I know I'm not perfect. But I come before you as a humble servant. Not a greedy servant. A humble servant. Because a greedy servant just wants and wants and wants. But a humble servant submits himself to God. Becomes obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. You have to know who you surround yourself with That's right. at all times. Right. At all times. Mm -hmm. Not just sometimes, at all times. At all times. See, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little brief story. I'm not going to use no names because I didn't speak to this individual. It's an individual I've known for, for, for a very long time. But, um, see, he grew up, and he grew up not having nothing. But he was good with his hands. He became a professional boxer. And, and he fought. And he became one of the top heavyweight champions. He had his belt. But see, when he got the belt, he surrounded himself with people that just wanted. Mm -hmm. See, because he became famous and the champion, then everybody wanted to be his friend. Uh -huh. You see? And it was good. And he, he, he helped. He began to help a lot of people, see? But the promoter began to use him and abuse him because he was not too intelligent, see? So the promoter began to use him. The promoter began to get him to sign papers and he didn't realize what he was signing. He thought that the promoter was, in his best was there you go, was working in his best interest. But the promoter worked for his own best interest because he signed the contract and he didn't realize that when he went to his next fight, he was actually paying for his own hotel room. And if he didn't win, he had to pay for certain other things. But he splurged and he began to help all these people that began to surround him. And when he went back for the next fight, he lost. And when he lost, literally, he lost everything. 
didn't even realize it. And even all those people that he was helping mm -hmm. left them. Yeah. They come temporarily. Mm -hmm. As long as you have, I want to be your friend. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it hurts and it's a shame. This man literally never got back to his family. He, walk, he could walk around. He can always talk of his past, how much of a great champion he was. But that's all he can do. Wow. That's all he can do. Because he cannot talk about how great he was. He can just speak of how famous he became. Temporarily. Yeah. Because when you lose the title, you lose the fame. Yeah, right. And if you never gain the title back, the fame never comes back to you. Right. And the reason I tell you this is because a lot of us surround ourselves with people that we shouldn't have around us. We surround ourselves with people that just want to use you for what you have. Mm -hmm. You need to surround yourself with people that want the Christ in you. Amen. If you surround your people that don't want the Christ in you, that's because they can't see the Christ in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say that again. You lost yourself. You lost yourself. See, when people can see the Christ in you, they begin to move away unless they want the Christ in you. Mm -hmm. Thank you Jesus. I tell you now, the world does not play fair. Nope. But when this young man came to his senses and he, he came up with the idea, he said, listen, I don't need to go through all of this. I can just go to my father's house. I go back to the country where I was, where I came from. And I go back to my father's house and I tell him, listen, I know I was wrong. I sinned. I, you don't have to take me back in as a son. Just take me in as a servant. I'll become a servant. I will work for you. I will do what I have to do. Amen. See, he realized that his father's house was a whole lot better than the pig pens. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. He got up. He said, I'm going back. And, and, and the beauty of it is that as he was going, as he was walking back to his father's house, when he got there from a distance, the father saw him. The father saw him. The father didn't stand there and wait for him to come back to say he was sorry and ask for forgiveness. The father ran out to the field to meet him and didn't even ask him what was wrong with him. The father just wrapped his arms around him, showed him the love that he always had for him. And today I tell you that God has this same love for you. Jesus Christ still demonstrates this love until today. He doesn't look at your flaws when you return to him. He looks at your heart. This young man returned home with a humble heart. Yes, God. Not a prideful heart. Yes, God. Not a greedy heart. Yes. He didn't say, well, you know what? I'm going to go back to my father's house and tell him I need a little bit more. Mm -hmm. No. He humbled himself. Hallelujah. See, it took him to hit the mud to realize how good he had it. A lot of people ungrateful. Yes, right. But the father threw his arms around them and kissed them. And then after that, it says, the son said to him, Father, I have sinned. He went through his whole rehearsal. <laughs> While he was with his father, he didn't have to. The father wasn't looking for an explanation. But because he had a humble heart, he went through his rehearsal to let his father know, listen, I know I sinned. You know, I, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father, the father cut him short. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Hallelujah. The father didn't tell him, go get a robe. He told him, bring the best robe Hallelujah. and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger yes. and sandals on his feet. Yes. That means that even the sandals on his feet were gone. Not because they wasted, 
but because he probably gave them up because he was in need and wanted something. And those sandals that he had on could not return home with him. So sometimes you got to take off certain things that you have before you return to the Father. Because if you return with the same thing that you left with, you're not going to get any better. You got to shake it off. Not today. Not today. Hallelujah. Then the father said, bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. And today I'm here to tell you, when you do return to God with a humbled heart, there is a celebration that takes place in the heavens. A great celebration. A celebration that no one can stop, that no one can detain. It is a celebration that God set for you already. Only when you return. Only when you return. Glory be your God. Glory be your name. Now I'm going to get into a good part here. See, because now the verse from 25 says, Meanwhile, the oldest son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked him, What was going on? Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. Family, family. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answers his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. I got to stop right there. He said, I've been slaving for you. Was he really slaving for his father? His father gave him half of the inheritance. So who was he slaving for? What he was slaving for was something that belonged to him, not the father. Because if the father gave it to him, then that was his property. Amen. <laughs> See, God gives us things, and then we complain later and say, God, here I am, slaving my life away for you, and here comes this person walking in through the doors, and you're going to give them as much as you've given me. Who are you to question God and tell God what he can give somebody and what he can't give somebody? Amen. God gives to whoever he feels like giving. We can't tell God who's right and who's wrong. See, when you have a selfish heart, you worry about what you're going to get. Amen. See, a selfish heart worries about what they can gain, Amen. how they can gain it. Uh -huh. But a humble heart shares what they have Amen. because they don't worry about going broke Amen. because God will provide their every need. Amen. See, a humbled heart will share with the new income, with the new person coming in those doors. Hey, listen, you know what? We serve a good God. Amen. Amen. But in our minds, we feel they're not worthy. See, just like the older brother. He didn't feel that his younger brother was worthy. He felt, you know, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed you. Yet, you never gave, even gave, gave it me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. Why would the father have to give him something he already had it? Amen to that. The father clearly told him, everything here is yours. Amen. Why should I, if you wanted to have a celebration, you should have had a celebration. You had it to do it. Amen. The father told him, but when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home, you kill the fat and kill um, the fattened calf form. The brother was telling him, Lord, you know, Lord. this man went and he squandered, he prostituted himself, he lost everything. Now he comes back and you want to give him the greatest, biggest party that, that you can never plan and, and, and do. Why do we worry so much when God is blessing someone else? Amen. Who are we to tell God who's worthy and who's not? Amen. God knows what he's doing. Better than you do. Yes. See, how about the times that you weren't worthy 
but God took care of you. Yes, thank you, Lord. How about those days when you squandered and forgot all about him? Hallelujah. But yet he never forgot about you. Amen. He had a celebration when you came back. Thank you, Jesus. His father told him, my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. Hallelujah. He was lost and now he's found. Yes. Many of us walk around lost, yes. but we are capable of being found when we allow ourselves to. You have to be careful with what you're taking. You have to be careful on how you speak. You have to be careful on how you act. Jesus. You have to be careful on the people you surround yourselves with. That's right. See, when God gives you a blessing, you have to know how to use that blessing. You cannot take God for granted. You cannot come before the presence of God only when you're seeking a blessing. You can't do that. See, this young man, he, all he thought about being free. But serving God isn't about being free. Serving God is about helping other people get free. Amen. Serving God is about being a servant. Too many believers, I'm telling you, and it's not to knock believers down. It's just to get believers to open their eyes and realize it is time to return back to the Father wholeheartedly. Yes. We cannot just continue to confess, I'm a servant of the Lord, but we're serving the world. Amen. There's a difference. We can't say, God, thank you, but not show no thanks for it. There is always a time in our life where we have to say, it's time to return. Amen. See, you know, you know Hallelujah. how you serve God. Hallelujah. I don't need to tell you how you serve God. You know how you serve God. Hallelujah. You know what's in your heart. You know whether you departed or not. Hallelujah. You know Jesus. your own intentions. But God knows them better than you. Yes, See, you can come and display whatever you want to the pastor. Jesus! I don't have to go before the presence of God and say, God, what are their intentions? Because God will display them. Yes, he will. He will display them. I don't need to ask God about none of your business. I just have to ha ask God to have mercy on all those that think they're going to manipulate the kingdom of God. See, you can be a prodigal child. But here I'm, to, I'm here today to tell you, God is waiting for you with open arms. Amen. With Lord open Lord. arms. Amen. You've tried your way. Your way has not worked. Come on. It is time to return. Yes, God. It is time to return. Yes, God. Hallelujah. For those of you here that are parents, the best inheritance that you can leave your child that you can actually give your child yes. is to teach them to love Jesus Christ. Yes. Because when you teach them to love Jesus Christ, Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek first his kingdom yes. and his righteousness, yes. and all these things will be given to you as well. So see, all these other things that the kids want will be given to them when they learn to seek God first. I remember growing up and always hearing how, oh, you just like that because your parents gave you everything that you got. Oh, you just like that because you, you, you got the silver plates and everything from your parents. But let me tell you something. Some people had to work hard to get what their parents That's right. gave them. That's right. It didn't come overnight. But there are some kids that don't know how to appreciate what the parents are giving. Well, Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
young man had it all. Uh -huh. He lived in a palace. He lived where he was being served. Wow. But he chose to go to the world and serve those in the world. Those that wasn't going to give him nothing. Amen. Nothing. They leased on to him. They drained him out. And the minute that, 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 that field was empty, they left him. Yep. They left him to die. In my days, when people talk, talked about friends, I said, my friend was the dollar in my pocket. When I went to the store and I spent the dollar, my friend stayed behind. We ran into each other from time to time, but he never stayed around. Because we always on a spending mood. Right? People won't understand it. You have friends that are out there. Don't get me wrong. But you don't when they're a friend. See, when you can just go and you can speak to them and they give you words of encouragement, then you know those are the ones that you need. But when you go to someone and they say, oh, you don't got no cash today, you can't hang out. Sorry. Your surroundings. Those that you, be, that you get very really close to. See, the older brother, he had issues. He had issues. He didn't know what love really was. He didn't. Because if he knew what love really was, when he saw or heard that the younger brother returned home, he would have went and gave him some love. He would have went and hugged him. He would have went and gave him a good robe. Amen. Amen. He wouldn't have became angry. Amen. See, and that's why in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, 31 to 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, Amen. forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Amen. We want forgiveness, but we don't want to forgive. A friend will not mock you because you serve Christ. A friend will not push you to the curb because you serve Christ. See, we do not have to agree with one another, but we surely have to respect one another. There's the difference. You don't have to agree with me because I serve God. I don't have to agree with you because you don't want to serve God. Amen. But I will respect you. Amen. Don't lose respect for me. And we will be okay. Right. We will be okay. Right. But you lose respect for me. Yeah. Be careful. Right. I'm not going to punch you in the mouth. Don't misinterpret me. <laughs> don't nobody leave out of here and say. Oh pastor said you disrespect him. He's going to punch you. No I did not say that. That's what's in your mind. Mm. See that's the world's way. I deal with my situations God's way. Amen. God's way. Amen. See, I read a post, and I'm sure many of you here, anybody look at Living Waters Tabernacle, you're going to see because uh, the pastor, Pastor Jackie, wrote this and said, sometimes it will be just with you and God. And sometimes that's right the way God wants you. Mm -hmm. See, at this young man's worst moments, it was just him and God. How can I say that? Very simple. Because he came to his senses. And because he came to his senses, that indicates to me that it was just him and God. Because when he said that he was going to go back to his father's house, he said, I have sinned against heaven and you. He recognized that he sinned against heaven. He recognized that his sin was against heaven. Amen. Amen. Sometimes God has to put you in a spot. Mm. In a real bad spot. So that you can realize. It's time to get back. Amen. See. And what I love is that God gives people opportunities. But people don't appreciate the opportunities. They appreciate it for the moment. And then after that moment dies out. 
everything goes back to the usual. Yes. God, thank you for giving me this other chance. God, thank you because you saved my life. God, I was dead and now I'm alive. But I think they inhale too much life that now they want to go back to being dead. Wow. <laughs> Be careful what you're inhaling. See, when you surround yourself with people that are very contaminated, right? You simply contaminate yourself. Not everybody in the family is going to be with for you. Not everybody in the family is going to be with you. See, when, when, when you really look at it, and I'm not going to get too deep into this because um, this is another one. But even Jacob, even Jacob realized that it was a time to return back to his homeland. He was very well blessed. See, he never got up and ran away because he was greedy. He ran away because his mama put him into a situation. So he had to leave his homeland to save his life. Not because he decided he was going to take his inheritance, you know, and go and splurge it. And, no. He took off to save his life. But after, after time, he realized, I have to get back to my homeland. How much time is it going to take you to realize that it is time to get back to the presence of God? It is time to return to our God. See, I'm not going to get too deep into this one because we'll be here too long. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I need you to ask yourself, where are you at? Have you departed? Maybe it was a partial depart. But remember, the Bible says you can't have one foot in and one foot out. No, 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 no. So don't tell me, well... I'm partially there. I'm almost there. Almost where? Because it's either you're there or you're not. You can't be in both places. Hallelujah. You can't. You can't run to God and ask for a blessing and then depart from God when he gives you the blessing and then come back to God and say, God, I'm sorry, but can you bless me one more time because I haven't finished over, over here yet. That doesn't work that way. We get it all mixed up and twisted. You have to understand, but when you really know where you at, then you'll be good. See, we're going to continue next week. But just, just for all you that are watching, invite somebody to come and watch. Next week, we're going to have Pastor White with us. If you haven't met him, you're going to meet Pastor White. Amen? Amen? Amen. You're going to meet Pastor White. Oh, you gotta invite somebody. Say, hey, we're gonna have Pastor White in my church next week. If you haven't heard about him, don't worry about it. You're gonna meet him. Pastor White is well known to all of you. He has crossed your path. I know he has. Amen? Amen. For all you that are watching. God knows all things. Yes. We're not perfect. But our job is to work towards that perfection. And I don't know where you're at or what conditions you're under. I don't know what you've walked away from. But today God says it is time to return. It is your time to return. So if you out there and you're watching... And you, you, you feel it in your heart. I, I, I invite you to just rise up to your feet. Right there where you at. Thank you, Jesus. And, ju and just pray with me. And just say, Lord, Gloria, I stand Lord. here before your presence. As I am. As the sinner that I am. Gloria, but I accept you into my life. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior and I believe with all my heart that God has raised you from the dead 
that he resurrected you on that third day Gracias, Señor. so that I can have <laughs> eternal life and now as I live within you God Father God you live in me just accept them into your life give them an opportunity to show you what he's capable of Hallelujah. not because I said so but because you feel it in your heart and if you said that prayer and you accepted him into your life today inbox us Thank you, reach out to us all we want to do is simply help you to continue in this path we will help you find a place where you can fellowship where you can serve God where you could continue to grow for his kingdom in the name of Jesus. Everybody here, just rise up to your feet. If there's anybody here who has slid away, just backslid. Because they, they just didn't know what to do. And they feel they're like that prodigal son. That they just got what they got and they just departed. Then I invite you to allow Christ back into your life. All you got to do is raise your hand and I will come and pray with you. Gloria a Dios Santo. Sometimes we feel embarrassed because we begin to believe what other people are going to think about us. Or we just worry about what other people are going to think about us. But today it's not about other people, it's about you. It's about what God thinks about you. See, the prodigal son, he did what he did. But in the midst of everything, it came to that point where he came to his sense and he realized. There was only one solution to his problem. And that was to return to his father's house. So I invite you to return back to your father's house. Your heavenly father. Yes. Amen, amen. It's the greatest offering. The parents didn't need to drop her into the basket. <laughs> Father God, just, just, let's just close our eyes and we're going to pray from right there. Father God, I come before thy presence giving you all the glory and honor. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity that you've given us. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for your precious word. Asking, Heavenly Father, that this word touch the hearts of all those that hear it. Whether today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, that as they hear this word, that they can come to their senses and return back to you, my God. That during this time of this crisis and everything else that's going on, and with the sun, Heavenly Father, that with these days just getting hotter and hotter, Glory. that everyone can choose the Son of God over the son of the world. That they can just accept Jesus Christ into their life. And forget about the sun that just shines above them. For God's light will always shine above us. When we accept them into our life. But I ask you to glorify yourself and manifest yourself. In each and everyone's home. Like never before, my God. That you have your way. That all those that never had a true encounter with you can have one today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory be your name, my God.